the, this is my farm in Quincy, and the topsoil here is very thin. It's a sandy clay loam topsoil that's usually about six or eight inches thick at least, but in some places it goes as much as like a foot and a half before it really has a lot of clay in it. Um, but even, even the top of it is relatively poorly drained because the sand is very fine sand and there's a lot of clay in it. But there is an intact topsoil here because of the Adipolgite or Fuller's Earth subsoil. Nobody ever put a plow to this land or cleared it. So it does have intact topsoil, which is great. So you got something to work with. Um, but the water table is essentially at the surface of the soil all summer long and half the winter when it's raining. So right now is one of our driest times and it's kind of dry and the ground's not squishy, but that won't last. So I want to plant this banana, which is a grand name. Um, so I want to make an instant raised bed. So the first thing I need to do is cut the edge of the bed. Some organic matter, pretty sandy, decent topsoil actually, but it, it's basically like swamp muck when it rains, which is most of the time because it's North Florida. This is our dry season. Got a big root there. Mm -hmm. I think it might come from the pond. Or that old tree. I just go around it. So this um, edge of the bed is going to do two things. It gives somewhere for the water to collect and drain away. The land is slightly sloped here. So on the low side I'll cut an outlet for the edge to drain. The other thing it does is it gives soil to put in the middle of the bed to raise it up. That's where the raised bed comes from. You know, soil's raised up. Normally I'd pull all these roots out, but I don't think it's going to bother the banana. I learned the hard way out here. I How followed was that? Um, every nursery's Disaster. unfortunate advice about digging a big hole and filling it with compost. And I noticed my trees weren't doing well, so I started digging them up. And about <laughs> this deep, it was the hole was full of water. And I realized the problem, the clay doesn't 
strain, the water can't percolate through the clay. So you don't want to dig into the clay. You want to stay above it. That's the best way to learn the hard way. No, that's not the best way. <laughs> well, I'm saying, because you try to tell somebody they don't understand. Or they don't listen. And until they actually see it and have it happen, it's unfortunate, but that's how people learn the best. A lot of people don't learn the hard way. That's <laughs> true. They do the same mistake over and over. Yeah, they never even learn. But at well, least you're showing this good example. Because it's going to save a lot of people time in a, a place that's more water throughout up, the year. Up up north, um, cutting beds, cutting the edge of a bed and making a raised bed is normal gardening basics. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, it's not part of our culture. Mm -mm. But we need it because I mean, we have the same soil. I and mean, that's something that you probably could get away from down south in sandy soil to do yeah. like... Most but, of Florida sandy and rocky. But not clay. Not this part of Florida, though. I have a conversation about um, not doing bog planting, but doing mound planting um, almost every day. That would work for a plant that loves the, the swamp. Yeah, if you're trying like to Cypress. make a bog, dig a hole and put compost in it. There you, you go. some sphagnum moss. Sphagnum. Sphagnum right. moss. At least every, with everything else, you should mound. Right. Persimmon You're is right. really tolerant of wet soil. So is apple and pear on the right rootstock. Cabbage palms, they like wet soil. I just these felt dwarf cabbage palms. They don't mind it either. Hmm. You planted these? No, nah, they're native. I planted these. These dwarfs came up, but like that's a. Uh, those are sable. Staples. I spread the seeds out here, just kind of broadcast them years ago. How old are they now? Well, they've been in the deep understory till recently. So they're probably 15 years old. So now they're going to probably speed up the process from yeah, then? Yeah, they, they did all this growth last year since I cut the trees. Wow. Yeah. They were languishing in the shade. There's a bunch of them, but they're mixed in with the dwarf sable that's native. How tall does the dwarf one get? I don't know. It just grows really slow. The biggest ones in the back are like seven or eight feet tall and they have little trunks. We should do a video on that too one day. Sounds good. So right now you're just taking advantage of the soil, putting it up on the mound, and then at the same time you're creating a spot for the water to kind of drain yeah. away from that. Yeah. So this is a mound to keep the banana above the water table. And this is a drainage ditch to drain the water away from it. So the whole thing effectively is going to be a couple of feet above the water table. And that's enough for a banana's root to not rot. Yeah. But if you were to plant it flat out here, root rot. It'd be dead, wouldn't it? It's inevitable. It's too poorly drained. Yeah. This place is more of a wet wetland. Not really wetland. Just holds water. It's just, I mean, you know, look at the trees. These aren't wetland trees. You're right. They're more but pine it's, and. It's poorly drained. Is it because of that layer that's never been disturbed? Well, it. You call it almost like a. It's a weird clay. It's like a. Out it's of a gray. Night, it's like dirt. gray. Yeah, greasy gray and white clay. The world's it, largest deposit, they say, is between Quincy and Moultrie. They mostly use it for refining petroleum. I can see that. They also use it for kitty litter and oil dry because it absorbs stuff. Mm -hmm. It absorbs a lot of water too. So you would do it all the way around the banana or until yeah. you just get it big enough? Yeah, all around. works good for any plant. If you notice, there's almost nothing successful out here that I planted that hasn't been mounded. Mm -hmm. and you can't see the unsuccessful ones that died. <laughs> Unfortunately. How does pawpaw do? Pawpaw actually is tolerant. 
of this of sitting in water. But it would do better on a hill to get going, right? I would assume. Probably. That triloba in the parviflora can grow in the soil, but those those species that are fire adapted to grow in the scrub probably would not grow out here. It would rot. How long have you had that shovel for? I like it. I think the blade I've had for a long time, but the handle's relatively new. It gives you the weight to get deep without having to put your foot on it. Yeah. It's for chopping through these roots. So someone doing this on some property that doesn't drain well, yeah. let's say they have real bad clay, they would probably have to actually bring in no, what soil. You, what you would do is you'd shape the clay like this. So you would also mound the clay up too if you had yeah. straight up clay? Because the water will percolate through the topsoil mm -hmm. and hit that clay and go off into the to the ditch. The ditch and drain away. You gotta drain your ditches. Okay. If not, if you can't drain your ditches, you gotta make the mound the ditch deeper and the mound higher. Mm -hmm. But here because we have a slope, I'll cut a little drainage ditch right over there. And luckily here you have some dark soil that you can mound that the banana will grow right through it. There's a lot, this is a pretty healthy soil out here. It's got a lot of organic matter. Mm -hmm. you know, it's natural forest soil. The poison ivy helps. Yeah. You can put on your skin for lotion. Yeah. No skin. Keeps me young. Yeah, unfortunately, it makes me all red. Yeah. Doesn't do anything to me. I guess I'm lucky. I'm happy for you. If it ever starts to, I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah, because this place is covered in it. Yeah. It's like the poison ivy farm out here. You might make money off it if it becomes a, a herb to use. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be ready to go. Uh, the market corner. Roots over here. Mm hmm. Might be from that dead tree behind you, or right beside you. Or that pine, because the soil's so thin here, mm -hmm. these trees' roots are right under the surface. That way they'll survive. Well, there's nothing else for them to grow in. True. To live, they're just on the surface you can, balancing. You can see over there, there's a white oak that the roots basically went through the top 12 inches of topsoil, and that's it. Wow. It couldn't get any deeper. The pines seem to be able to sink some tap roots through the plant. They're a little bit better anchored. Mm -hmm. How far do you start hitting some clay in here? About 12 inches. The good top soil is in the top though. I usually don't dig any deeper than this unless I have to. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, when I'm planting the banana, it's in well-drained soil, and well-drained does not refer to the surface of the soil, whether it's sloped or not. It refers to the internal structure of the soil. Can the water percolate through it? And it can percolate right through to this ditch and drain out. It doesn't really matter what the shape is on the top. I mean, it matters, but that's not what they mean. They don't mean is it sloped or do you have ditches. That's an effort towards well-drained soil, but if all you have is clay with no topsoil, it doesn't matter how you shape it, your soil is poorly drained. And you gotta build topsoil. And this is part of it. First you contour what you got, then you start putting in amendments, and for these bananas, that's going to be charcoal and mulch. Probably a lot of nitrogen, too. A lot of putting coffee grounds on mine. But mainly, the, uh, the charcoal is going to do the feeding. It's going to hold a lot of moisture and hold a lot of nutrition yeah. for it. And it's going to 
provide a habitat for nitrogen fixing bacteria. Now comes the soil building part. Got some ground pine bark mulch. Mm -hmm. See how the edge catches the mulch and makes a defined mm -hmm. edge between your raised bed I like it. and your lawn. I guess you were right, we could have used three bags. There you go. That'll get a good start going. I love it. Now we have a raised bed and we're well along the way to building a good topsoil. And we'll keep adding organic matter, mulch, leaves, chips small logs, sticks, mm -hmm. and charcoal. And eventually we'll make a nice thick raised bed of well-drained rich soil, which is what bananas need. They love it. So what, what type of banana is this one? Grand Nain, it's like the Chiquita banana. Okay. I love bananas. Me too. It's got a nice look to it and the It'll give you a lot of fruits. Give you a lot of fruits if you take care of it. These are work for flops. Everyone sees you traveling everywhere with them. My fat feet don't really fit in any shoes, and when they do, they get hot. Uh huh. I said it's better for you. I don't know if it's better for me, but <laughs> this is what's happening. <laughs> you remember when you were hiking out in the woods, you yeah, flip flop broke flip -flop. off? <laughs> That's when you probably wish you had some duct tape. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you, it does you good walking barefoot, it's healthy. Thick skin, the uh, walking on gravel or whatever doesn't really hurt me. It's good. Maybe I got fat. There's no puffy. Right. It's part of muscle. I think it's some glare of fat. I don't know, like pad. Keep you safe. Like a fat pad. So how long should someone make this? Just deep enough near the end so it flows well, out. We got a general slope here. So after you make this about six or eight feet long, um, that's the slope. It pretty much, the water will pool in the downslope side. Uh, probably about eight feet. So. We're close. The length depends on your slope. They shut the greenhouses. Glad you did, because it did get cold out there. Yeah, Here and where I'm at. Like now I was afraid I was going to get some burnt on my fruit I had. One time, on like the 29th day of April, we got the 26th of them. Wow. And if there was an official weather station, it would have broke a record. How long was that ago? About 10 years 15, ago? 18 years, somewhere. I don't remember exactly. I remember I got up in the morning, looked at my thermometer, I couldn't believe it. I was like, that's awfully late mm -hmm. <laughs> to get that cold. Yes. I guess I could figure it out because my neighbors moved in the next year and they planted some tomatoes in March. And I said, you might not want to do that. <laughs> going to freeze they said that's not what this resource online says that's well we're kind of in a cold hole here right so I think they probably learned the hard way you might want to cover those tomatoes 
said, you're right, our tomatoes froze in April. It's not supposed to freeze in April. I said, well, it does here in our little valley. Yeah. It's what you call a sinkhole of air. Yeah, it's a low spot. The hills are a couple hundred feet higher. And there's only one ravine and it's full of trees where the cold air can kind of drain. So it has nowhere to go. I would say that right about there is going to drain that whole that whole uh, ditch around the edge of the bed. But um, when it when it does rain, I'll make sure. And you can see it's definitely lower over there. So mm -hmm. if I need to cut this ditch a little lower that way, I can. I think that's enough. I think I'll wait for it to rain before I dig anymore. Okay. Now this area along the side here is a little bit well drained too. And you could so if I wanted to put like some pepper plants or something in there, I could. That's multi multi use. I like that. Yeah, that's about all I would put there probably. Thank you, John. Yes, sir.